During late 1942 and early 1943, the fortunes began to turn for Nazi Germany and there seemed little they could do to turn the tide. Italy, an ally of Nazi Germany, saw the Italian fascist Grand Council and the Italian king dismiss and arrest Benito Mussolini, Italy's dictator. Hitler wanted Mussolini rescued as it was of vital importance that Italy not switch sides to the Allied powers. What followed was one of the most daring special operations of the Second World War, the rescue of Benito Mussolini. Hitler saw use of the special German commando, the so-called Brandenburgs, as crucial in embarking on secret operations and bolstering the German morale. Otto Skorzeny would be the man to lead these commandos during the most dangerous operations of World War II. Skorzeny was a tall, scar-faced Austrian and in 1943 he was made commander-in-chief of German commandos. He ended up occupying himself with studying Abwehr files on British commandos, Special Air Service Forces, US Marines, among other elite troops. He was planning a raid into Persia and the Ural Mountains of Russia when in July word got out that the Italian fascist Grand Council had removed Benito Mussolini from power and King Victor Emmanuel III subsequently replaced him with Marshal Pietro Badoglio. When this happened, Skorzeny had never met Hitler nor heard about his secret wolf lair in East Prussia. He received a phone call and was flown in and once he arrived Hitler selected him from a group of officers with a task of the utmost importance that will have a tremendous effect upon the course of the war. Skrzeny left under the command of paratroop general Karl Student. Both men landed in Rome on the 27th of July making their way to the headquarters of Field Marshal Albert Kesselring, German commander-in-chief of Italy. The Italians had assured Kesselring that Mussolini was in Rome, however Badoglio, without the Germans knowing, moved him off the island of Ponza. Both the Germans and the Italians kept up an elaborate game of deception and false friendship until the eventual breakup of their alliance could be spun into an advantage. Scorzeni spent weeks investigating and reviewing intelligence, after which he pinned Mussolini's location down to a small island on the Tyrrhenian Sea of the Italian west coast. Just as he started planning the operation, the Italian government moved Mussolini to Maddalena, to the northeast of Sardinia. Scorzeni used the Abwehr agents and contacts in Italy in order to confirm Mussolini's whereabouts. The German Luftwaffe confirmed that the island had suddenly upped its level of defenses, more or less confirming the presence of an important person. During a reconnaissance mission, Skrzeny and his pilot were shot down by the British Royal Air Force. Ironically, the group of German special units were rescued by an Italian anti-aircraft ship there to guard Mussolini against a rescue attempt. Skrzeny returned to Madalena disguised as a German sailor and tasked Lieutenant Varger with finding the exact whereabouts of Mussolini. Varger got lucky when he asked around and a local vegetable trader took him to the Villa Weber where they waited outside and, surrounded by guards, saw Mussolini. The vegetable trader was paid a handsome reward and Scorzani made new plans, a full-scale special unit assault. On the 28th of August they would storm the villa, but one day before, in the vicinity of Mussolini's whereabouts, a civilian seaplane with red cross markings took off and flew east. When Warger made his rounds the next day, he discovered Mussolini had been moved, upon which he quickly contacted Scorzani, who cancelled the operation at the last moment. Scorzani had to rediscover Mussolini's location and map out a new rescue mission. Fortunately, SS officer Herbert Kuppler contacted him with information that something strange was happening in the Abruzzi mountains east of the city. Security measures around the resort of Gran Sasso were increased, seemingly without a reason. The Germans concluded it could only be because of the fact that Mussolini was moved there. By this time, Scorzani had gathered a team of competent subordinates, such as Warger, and a decent network of Italian informers employed by the Sicherheitsdienst and the Abwehr. A hotel, high up on the Campo Imperatore Plateau, was the place Mussolini was held. 
The location was only to be reached by cable car, impossible to reach by road. It was the perfect prison, or so the Italians thought. Now, it had to be confirmed Mussolini actually was there, and General Student got medical officer Leo Kutov to find out if the Italians would be willing to let the Wehrmacht use Gran Sasso as a center to recuperate for its troops. When Kutov tried to reach Gran Sasso, he was held back by Italian Carabinieri guards, confirming that it was under military control and off-limits to outsiders. It was enough to confirm Mussolini was there. In order to rescue Mussolini, Scorzani devised a plan that his superiors didn't even consider as serious. 100 German paratroopers would glide through the mountains and land on Gran Sasso. As the gliders were silent, they would not be detected by the Italians until they had boots on the ground. While his senior officers had extreme doubts, Hitler, who could appreciate a daring plan and determination, approved the plan. On the 12th of September 1943, 12 German aircraft towing gliders set off and flew to the Abruzzi Mountains. Otto Skorzeny's right-hand man, Max Gadel, thought it a good idea to bring along the fascist Carabinieri commander, General Fernando Soletti. Adventurous as Soletti was, he agreed, and when Skorzeny and his team were up in the air and glanced out, he noticed two gliders had vanished. Considering there were several more, it shouldn't have been a problem had it not been for the fact that the advanced troops and the guide of the entire party were in them. Skorzeny now had to direct the glider towards the location from memory. Fortunately, he managed to, and the gliders crash-landed as close to the hotel as possible. The paratroopers rushed towards the hotel, entered and bolted up the stairs as General Soletti ordered the 200 carabineries that guarded Mussolini to hold fire. Mussolini was quickly found and placed in a small storage observation aircraft that had landed. The plane was overloaded as it had Scorzani, Mussolini and the pilot in it. The pilot, Captain Gerlach, at first refused to take off with this much weight. Scorzani forced him to fly and the plane took off the edge of the cliff, plummeting in the ravine below. Gerlach, fortunately an able pilot, managed to stabilize it and fly to Rome. From Rome, Mussolini flew to the wolf's lair, where Hitler welcomed him. Scorzani became famous within Germany, and his daring raid boosted the morale of the battered German nation. He was used in propaganda posters, radio broadcasts, and papers. What was more important was that Mussolini set up a fascist state in northern Italy afterwards, and held the southern front. The bloody war in Italy continued under the command of Marshal Kesslering. Among the German high command, Scorzani became known as a daring troubleshooter. His next mission would not be until May 1944, as Yugoslavia became a destabilizing factor for Nazi Germany. But that mission, Operation Gushelsprung, is a story for another time. Thank you for watching this video, and what is a secret mission or spy that you would like to know more about and perhaps see a video of? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to this channel. See you next time.